Hey teachers, welcome to the second video in the Writing Center series. Writing centers can be really messy, so it's important to keep that chaos controlled, otherwise it's going to drive you absolutely bonkers. If you missed the first video in this series, the playlist will be linked in the description below. And if you're short on time, there are chapter links in the description, which will help you jump ahead to the parts that you need to watch. My name is Rachel Hull, and in the past, my Writing Center was less than effective. That's putting it nicely. Um, my students were off task. The writing they did, if they wrote at all, was not what they were capable of doing. And really, we all got pretty bored with the activities after a while. And writing centers can be messy with all the papers and the supplies everywhere. You're going to want to avoid the off-task behavior that will inevitably happen when six-year-olds get bored. So today we're discussing where you would like to put your writing center. And then I'm going to give you some tips if you have a smaller classroom like I have. So here are three things to think about when you're deciding where to put your writing center. The first tip is to choose a large area for your writing center. Now, all, out of all of your literacy centers, you're going to want to save the biggest space for your writing center. It's because you've got supplies, you've got activities, you may need a pocket chart. You know, you're going to need a lot of space for this center. So if we look back at my very rough drawing in my classroom here, it's, it's lovely, I'm sure, you'll see that at the back of the room next to my carpeted area where I have my whole group uh, activities, there's a perfect spot for my writing center. There's a space to add a large pocket chart if I need one, and I can have some drawers like these to keep the supplies. So there's plenty of room here. The second thing you need to think about when you're deciding where to put your writing center is to make sure that you keep it within your eyesight. This, of course, goes with any of your literacy centers, but since the writing center is difficult for students, it's hard for six-year-olds to write independently for any period of time. So. Again, it's normal to have off-task behavior, so you're really going to want to make sure that you can keep an eye on your students. So here's my classroom again. My small group table is up at the front right here, but you can tell that I have a eye line, like it's straight to my writing center. I can see them at all times. And again, it's normal for them to have off-task behavior. That's a typical thing for six-year-olds to have, but we still need to keep them accountable and responsible for their work at your writing center. So here's our last tip. Hopefully by now you have an idea of where you would like to put your writing center, but there's one thing to consider if you don't have like a large pocket chart that you can put right next to your table and that's um, making sure you set it up by maybe a wall or a counter where you can post helpful anchor charts or keep baskets of activities. Now my room was really small and it had a long counter along the side. I have tried in years past to put my writing center over there but then I would need to pull it out to get to the supplies I stored behind it. It never really worked for me so I opted to put it more toward my small group or sorry my my whole group area with a pocket chart there and it worked just fine. So if you're concerned about this large area that you have set up for your classroom writing center, I want to show you how you can maximize that space. Um, during the day, not during our literacy centers, but throughout the day, I would have volunteers or aides come in and they'd work with my students. And that was a great place for them to do. Everybody had a table and she, you know, she, my aide, could come and work with a couple students. Or if you have students who just aren't comfortable sitting on the floor, they could sit at that table and it'd be fine. And I gave them a choice. They were never in trouble, but they had that choice. And I always did that. See, I was, I'm six foot one. I'm tall you guys. And so I was always that kid that was the tallest in my classroom. And so sitting on the floor is uncomfortable for me. It always was. I would, you know, my big gangly arms and legs would just go everywhere. And so it just never was comfortable. So, because of that, if I have a taller student or somebody who just can't sit on the floor comfortably, I always offer the chance to sit at my writing center and then we can just go on and it's fine. So there you go. I would love to see pictures of your writing center set up. You can email it to me. Um, I would love to see them. And if this was helpful, please click like so YouTube does its thing and shows it to other teachers just like you. This was the second video. The third video is going to show you how to organize all of your writing center supplies and activities so your students will know how to get them, where they live, you know, all, all the things. We're going to get really organized. So take a moment now and click that little bell down below because then you'll be notified when the next video is updated. And I'll see you then.